Good afternoon everyone, Lauren and Thomas, Alid and I would like to thank you all for being here today. You were all invited here today basically because each one of you is someone important to Lauren and Tom that you've made the long trip down here to this beautiful location to celebrate with them, to be here together as friends, uh, as family. <laughs> today is, it's as much a celebration of your relationship as it is a commitment today that we're really happy for you guys. We're really honored to be here, not just as guests at your wedding, but as witnesses. And you know, to help you celebrate your celebration of, this rel of your relationship in this way today, it's really important to all of us. since primary school. Uh, I was going back to like three years old, uh, way too long, uh, by the way. Tom, we were in Beavers together, yeah. But you couldn't, couldn't come to Cubs because you had karate practice, I remember that. So we had to link up again in yeah, comp, yeah. didn't we? Yeah, um, so it was a great time. But the first time I remember the two of you, something like developing was U6 prom. So U6 prom would be when all the rival primary schools come together and they have a bit of a, a disco and there was a band playing you remember it and there was sort of talk between my primary school <laughs> there was talk between my primary school that Lauren fancied the guitarist in the band and it was it was Tom it was Tom <laughs> yeah <laughs> What a wonderful day. What a wonderful occasion. Yes, I am tipsy, Thomas. <laughs> we have each of us travelled great distances to be here today uh, in order to share the celebrations of two very special people, Thomas and Lauren. Loyalty is paramount. Um, lots of the people that are here I helped them to learn to read, <laughs> so there's no need to put on airs and graces to me. I've been there since they've been little beautiful children. I've seen them develop into spotty teenagers. <laughs> oh, not good. And now, <laughs> and now they are absolutely gorgeous adults, and I love each and every one of them. Um, Thomas and Lauren have taken their times 18 years. 18 years. You could be celebrating your anniversary, golden, silver wedding anniversary, <laughs> seven. Don't tell me. Seven years it could have been. I could have been around, right? Um, but in the order of the universe, it's a speck of time. 
13 years as a couple, they have shared many happy times and a few very sad ones. They have supported each other unreservedly. They are a couple who are perfect for each other. Loyalty, faithful, loving, caring. In my heart of hearts, I know that they are right for each other. I hope that they will share many, many happy years together. I am sure that they will celebrate their 25th wedding anniversary. And as long as you both remain as loyal to each other as you have been over the last 13 years, you can't go wrong. I just want to mention that, of course, if Dad were here, he would be very, very proud. <laughs> so, I wish you, them every, every happiness that I could possibly wish you. most admirable in the relationship is the communication. Communication, a word that originates from the Latin communicare, meaning to share. As a couple, they seldom have <laughs> they seldom have a crossword. They both listen and speak in equal measure and they respect one another's opinions. Katie's mum Sally offers these words of wisdom to any newlyweds. Choose your battles wisely. Don't go to war on a whim. Don't load your guns with venom, but most importantly, only ever fight if you have to win. <laughs> Where during uni, they both travel and put in time to see each other. But what I think can get overlooked is sometimes the time they put into themselves. Both earning degrees, Lauren's first nursing job, Tom working for Steve Winwood, and of course, their first flat together. But once back from a North American tour, Swansea was calling Home. home being Marlene's house. <laughs> While they found their feet before taking the next step of buying their house that they now very proudly call their home. I started with a quote so I'll finish with one. As John Lennon once said, time you enjoy wasted was not time wasted. Oh, no. I had one where Lauren was prepared to pick up arms one day. So while <laughs> selling their TV, Tom had suddenly dawned on him that actually they live on the outskirts of town. <laughs> and that anyone to get up on their doorstep could have a criminal conviction too. So in his panic, he hands Lauren a golf club and he tells her, quick, go hide around the corner. <laughs> and without a second hesitation, she does. And I just think you're not a team unless you're willing to branch. <laughs> Eleanor, Lauren, Nicholas, do you promise to uphold the values that you've heard here today from your friends and your family and accept Thomas Daniel Glyn Colwell to be your husband? I do. <laughs> and Thomas Daniel Glyn Colwell, do you promise to uphold the values and take Eleanor, Lauren, Nicholas to be your wife? I do. <laughs> Lauren and Tom, with your blessing, with the love and support of everyone here, we are happy to call you husband and wife. Do the kiss.
Um, I've been friends with Lauren for well over 10 years now. Unlike some of you, I didn't know her when she was a gorgeous, chubby little kid with a full fringe. <laughs> or when she was an awkward, gangly little thing in her teenage years. Although I grew up pale and ginger, so we would be fast friends with her. <laughs> um, I didn't know her when she would spend her days down west, either slaving away, um, working summers, or when she was on a quad bike, crashing into hedges. <laughs> Thankfully though, her driving skills have improved. <laughs> and as such, whenever I, the elusive recluse I am, would say, oh no, Lauren, I can't come to the beach, or to town, or anywhere really today, you would say, I'm on my way. Oh. <laughs> and awesome. you've consistently shown up over the last 13 years, whether that's a 6 a.m. start to make a birthday cake, letting me have all the good foods on that 24 hour flight to America, to <laughs> Australia <laughs> or knowing never to text me too early in the morning <laughs> you do so much for me and it never goes unnoticed Thomas oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. from your baby pictures uh. I'm so glad you've grown into your face <laughs> 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 you annoy me on a level of par with my brother oh. but never forget you're the only man I've let come house hunting with me, who oh, I've no. let help me build furniture, and who I let look after me full stop, really. Oh. <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> Lauren, my only concern with Tom is that his nose and ears will continue to grow. <laughs> like most of you, I've known Tom and Lauren together more than I have apart. I see all the love they have for each other in all the small ways. Lauren, you're a terrible food orderer, unlike Tom, who's actually pretty good. <laughs> and I often see him surrender his meals in favour of Lauren's just to make oh, her happy. And I would oh, never do that for anyone, all right? Oh, 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 Lauren, who once caused a mile-long queue of people when she got jelly legs coming down some stairs on holiday, would never get on a ladder to help anyone else but Tom. <coughs> if either of you were ever in any need, each other's names would always be the first you'd shout. You're the only couple who I actively think, thank God I have them. And for that, let's raise a toast. Oh. Grab your glasses oh. to Tom and Lauren. Oh, 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 My earliest memories of Lauren are of another small child sat in the same baby chair I once sat in, eating a dippy egg and soldiers the same way I once did in our nanny Dell's kitchen. There was something different about this newest arrival though. The endless crowds of aunts and cousins all flocked to the small house in Milford Haven, but this time they all cooed that little bit longer. <laughs> A girl had arrived, the only one in the family. This was all new to me. Her toys were different, her pram, dummy and clothes a funny colour, but we didn't hold it against it. <laughs> Grant took it upon himself naturally, teach her the fundamentals of being a young woman. <laughs> <laughs> Most namely, garden, uh, china collecting, gardening, riding a quad bike, and of course, the proficient use of firearms. <laughs> <laughs> As a young adult, Lauren came to work with me at the crepe stores and in my cafe. She was amazing, and I think she loved it. She loved being part of a team and they all loved working with her. Mm. She was hard working, reliable and confident. Mm. Effortlessly juggling charm charming conversation with the customers and making their food as they stood inches <laughs> away. Quite, quite the achievement for a 15 year old. Were you underpaid then, Lauren? Yeah! 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 I know, I know. Heavily overpaid. Oh, Hale's crying. I haven't even got to the tear jig about it. Uh, more recently, Lauren and Tom have become regulars on the family ski trips. A memory that stands out is us all being caught in a whiteout, struggling to get down a mountain in blizzard conditions. Lauren was fairly new to the ski uh, to skiing, but fair play to her. In spite of the tears running down her eyes, she just soldiered on. It was a black run. She was actually very angry. <laughs> 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 you fucking you did, didn't you? She was very angry. <laughs> <laughs> so, Law, 
I've seen you nearly kill yourself on a quad bike, <laughs> fight your way through a blizzard, and finish <laughs> most of Tom's pint. <laughs> 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 but what I'm most proud of, what, what I'm most proud of you for, is that you've steered your own course. You've not just followed the path of least resistance and you've never looked happier. Well done, we're all so proud of you. And I know that you guys will be happy for a very long time. I came aware of Lauren. Um, we were on the same school bus. On the 332A. Via, via Tikoid. I was meant to be on the 332, but I snuck onto the 332A. It was slightly nicer, and it was the one for the campus estate on the bottom, which is where I was from. I wanted to be with the posh kids, so I went on the 332A. So I was on Lauren's bus, and the school buses are disgusting. And one time there was this raucous, almost fight that broke out, where there was like projectiles, there were like shoes just being thrown, and I saw a giant like size 12 shoe, and I just threw this projectile, and it landed directly. Direct Lauren's face. <laughs> my first memory of Lauren was a crying face where I was just profusely apologising, much like your dress earlier where I got pasta all over it. <laughs> where I was just profusely apologising for hitting you in the face with a giant size 12 shoe. And you were very humble about it and you said, don't worry about it, but you were very much still crying as you got out of the bus. And I still feel terrible about that to this day. But I'm glad I'm, I'm glad we're still friends. Um, and I only met Tom today, so I don't really have much. Uh, no, so up until today, I thought I knew Tom for 27 years. Um, but I actually know him for 28 years because I was reminded earlier that uh, when we were two, we were one carriage apart on a carousel in Gorsain and Carnival. Uh, one year before we even met at nursery school. Um, so yeah, that was quite a nice thing to learn today. And since that uh, first meeting at the age of two, uh, we went through nursery and reception and infants and juniors <laughs> and secondary school and college <laughs> and university <laughs> oh on the same course in the same house um, up until the age of about 22 um, and it was alright yeah <laughs> it could be a better way to spend it but yeah um, and you know although we've kind of deviated in our geography I think those kind of ties very early on in life are the things that last and although we're not always directly on hand in a very obvious way I think we both know that we can always call on each other when we need to and uh, sometimes friendship doesn't do it justice sometimes it feels more like brotherhood so with that in mind Tom and Lauren <laughs> first things first, I think we can all agree Tom is punching well above his weight. Yeah! Yeah, it's blatant. Uh, Tom is one of those annoying people that is good at everything yeah. golf, drums, Mario Kart, <laughs> cocktail making. Rugby. He could have played for Wales or oh, so he says. <laughs> but there are some there are some things he's not so good at. Flying on planes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Handling his drink. <laughs> Wiring a plug, as we found out the day. And helping to organise a wedding. <laughs> Whereas Lauren yes. only has pros. <laughs> Her wedding planning skills, <laughs> the ability to put up with Tom, yeah. her NHS discount when ordering Nando's, <laughs> and baking, her cream pies are excellent. But in all seriousness, I am very happy to, to have known you both all these years and to be able to call you a friend. I wish you many more years of happiness. Aww. Aww. <laughs> 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 Firstly, 
I left some space in my speech because I knew some people would have a go at me. And what a bloody character assassination those were. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, you all know me, so I'm quite shy. So I'm gonna <laughs> try and keep yes. this qu quite short. But thank you all for coming such a long way. Look at us, sunny France. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know. I wouldn't travel this far for some of you. I think that makes this day a bit more special. <laughs> uh, look at all the effort that's gone in. Pitching in this week has been fantastic. I mean, breakfast in the morning has been great. Washing all these glasses and plates of dishes all the week as well. Shopping and Lucy's fantastic feet rubs. They've been so I'm going to just try and say thank you to everyone. That's what I've been told I need to do. So I'm going to start with uh, Johnny and Alid. You did too bloody good of a job, didn't you? Well done, boys. Uh, that's well a well done. Well done. Well done. The bridesmaids, are they yes. all spaced all over? Oh. One, two. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we've done a fantastic job the last couple of days. A attention to details I didn't know existed uh, on things like, what's this called? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's called a button call. <laughs> Thank you very much. Team news values. And, and you've done such a good job sorting Lauren out. Look at her. Oh. 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 My best men, that just goes for all the men that are in this area. Because I haven't got a best man, but if I did, then you know who you are. <laughs> but really, it's, it's good to see all my friends kind of in one group again together. And new friends, because we haven't, we haven't done this in such a long time. A diverse group of friends, I might add. Who have made me a better person for it. Be yeah. Made me more tolerant. <laughs> More kind and understanding, and Bobby, you're right, some of us are more diverse than others. <laughs> uh, the photographers, thank you, Alla and Jan. We were, uh, for capturing our fantastic day and also making me realise that it's okay to have more than two or three pictures. Uh, that was great. Um, Broad term, broad term, caterers, everyone who's pitched in, like I said this week, today's meal was fantastic. Oh, Chicken rice, where is he? Oh. Chicken, Chicken rice! rice. Chicken rice! Chicken rice! Chicken rice! Chicken rice! Lauren's family as well, for embracing me. Um, oh, oh, we are Kaylee. We try our best. <laughs> <laughs> Energy makes me feel tired. Yes. 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 Lucy, those foot rubs. Can I just say, can I just say oh, three years is. now, never once had a foot rub. Stop. Stop. Grant, you're fantastic. That's offsetting, Danny. I don't know what you're doing. And uh, Tina, you're so welcome, so kind in the house. So that's brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank my family as well, uh, my mum and my dad who's obviously not here with us, um, but we miss every day. So I'd like to do my first toast to all people who oh. couldn't, couldn't be with us. Absent friends. So cheers. So, Lauren, my sweet, my oh. first wife. <laughs> <laughs> As has been pointed out, it, it was a bit of a long time coming, so it wasn't really so much of a shock proposal as a, a, a shoehorn to make sure it didn't get past the 10 year date. So I think it was 10 years, uh, 11 months and something like 28 days, um, just to make sure it wasn't 11 years together. Yeah. 
Um, I felt that was about the right time. Um, I don't like to rush into things. Um, so that's my nice bit over. Um, no, we've been through a lot together, obviously through, uh, well, 11 years old. Is it 11 or 12 in there? 12. 12 years old. Uh, that's where she first fell in love with a, a chubby guitarist with an oversized Aww. guitar uh, who she asked out uh, and who I said can you ask me later I'm having food it was a good spread on at that uh, year six prom I don't know if anyone else it was party ring yeah, it was great yeah, come to the Teenagers together, obviously Lauren uh, sat next to me in a couple of classes, history being the main one. Um, I don't think I was aware at the time uh, how teenage girls showed their affection, but I'll, I'll show you what Lauren did, see if you can spot the affection. Oh, no. It was the day after she had her braces on, <laughs> uh, her braces off, and uh, she went, Tom! said uh, we, we went to separate universities where we spent a bit of time apart um, but there never seemed to be any part of a worry and we were apart until I think it was a month before I was to finish university where Lauren turned up and uh, told me she found a flat and we were moving in and I don't recall any conversations about that but the next thing I knew we were living together and uh, I wasn't going back to, to Swansea, we were staying in Cheltenham. Mm -hmm. um, from organising a flat to organising a house that we renovated together, which took a lot of uh, blood, sweat and tears. My blood and sweat and Lauren's tears. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, again, Lauren's uh, outstanding at organising everything. And uh, One thing she's allowed me to do over the last couple of years is to find my own feet in organising, you know. I got my own passport for this trip. Oh, oh, um, only just. Only just. Oh, um, oh yes, after visiting to Liverpool. That was about two weeks before, and it was a long old drive, and I got my own clothes, and, uh, and I did write my own speech. Was oh. yesterday. Oh. Um, <laughs> so there's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Matt wrote my notes down for me. So oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I can't read my own handwriting. <laughs> um, there's so many things I, I love about Lauren. Um, competitive nature. Mm. She's a sore winner. And like a lot of people said, I, I win a lot. So when she does win, she doesn't let me forget it. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, talented crafter, you know. Oh, All of these things have yeah. kind of been dreamt up. The cake, you know, the candlesticks. Okay. Everything has just been a vision. So I love that about her. She's got, she got vision. Uh, kind. Uh, and gracious and awfully vengeful. That's <laughs> <laughs> what so I really love. Oh, yeah. But uh, I'm going to leave it on uh, this last little note. I say a lot of people uh, in my life do like to see me fail. Uh, at things. <laughs> but I think uh, I think they'll be happy to see on this occasion that I've won. Aww. Aww. Well, what I want to say is. Since he was a little boy, he's always been very, very lucky in his choice of friends. Oh, yeah. And I think he could have ended up with Ed Bays, you know, but <laughs> well, you were threatened with an Asbo. <laughs> <laughs> he was threatened with an Asbo. We had a letter from the police. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah, we did. Which you want to know? No, no. We had. We had. Exposing himself in public? No, to write, no. Doing his A level maths on the local. Uh, cricket pitch. Oh. He was sitting with the vicar's son, <laughs> a real, a raucous bloke, right? Not. They were sitting there, and one of the local councillors, uh, a real blogger, uh, uh, he phoned the police to say. Is this a good wedding story? Yes. He phoned the police to say there were trespassers on the cricket pitch, and because Thomas has never been known. To <laughs> control his town. <laughs> <laughs> he knew his rights and he was entitled to sit in this cricket pitch right. and do his maths 
the decision with Edward Bates. Yes. No way! Edward yes. Uh, Edward right Bates. Yes. Yeah. And the woman came, policewoman, and she was have been very new, and she was the jobs worth. Oh. She was the jobs worth. Oh. 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 Thomas, oh. Thomas, oh. Thomas oh. couldn't oh. shut her. Yeah. He couldn't shut her. And I can see where I learned that from. <laughs> So, we had a letter from the Chief Inspector threatening him with an ASBO if there was any more trouble within six months. But his father was as stubborn as him, so we went first of all to the uh, inspector, the sergeant, no joy. We complained to the inspector, no joy. We had complained to the chief constable, no joy. Ed Bays, the vicar, he just went straight to the chief constable and he had this letter threatening him. Ed Bays had nothing. Apart from Ed, thank goodness. For all these other lovely, lovely, <laughs> lovely, lovely,